Friday and Saturday, the last two days, our nation mourned and buried a queen and a lion. The queen of soul, Aretha Franklin herself, and the last lion of the Senate, John McCain. Now, both services were a celebration of their life, their new life in God through Christ in heaven, and of course, remembering and celebrating their life among us. And although they were two very different services, you have Aretha's uh, six-hour homecoming service, which was filled with gospel songs, with great readings and tributes, and stars singing her songs, that anybody who watched that just knew that this is something that Aretha would have wanted to praise God, even in the midst of death. Because you see, her, her daddy was a preacher. And for her, church, her community, where she attended all the time, that was her homing beacon. It was the church that, that taught her to love Jesus. It was the church where she was given the opportunity to explore her voice and to use her voice to praise God, not once, but twice. Whenever she was alone or felt blue, she would go to her church because it would provide comfort and solace in the midst of her own personal struggles. Of course, Senator McCain's funeral service yesterday at the National Cathedral, which is, my friends, our Episcopal, one of our Episcopal cathedrals. And the service, if you watched it or read it, all the words that were written were directly in our Book of Common Prayer. And when you have a funeral here, you'll, you'll see the exact same thing, except we usually have the Eucharist as part of it. But McCain's service, although different, was also about praising God. I mean, hearing the words from the bishop, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me shall never die. Making that great antiphon, even though we make our way to the grave, we are singing our songs, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. McCain's service, especially with the words that were spoken, and his life reminded me that although church was very important for Senator McCain, he was baptized as a baby in an Episcopal church after, of course, his five and a half years of torture, um, his marriage with his wife failed, and that's not surprising. But later he met Cindy, who was a Southern Baptist, 
And so they attended a Southern Baptist church for 25 years. But Southern Baptists, they, if you were baptized in another tradition, they want to rebaptize you. And Senator McCain's like, I've already been baptized. But you see, Senator McCain learned a lesson about the church growing up. And that is being people of God. We have an obligation and a responsibility not just to be stuck in the comfort of our churches, but in order to be the whole church, we need to feel comfortable, although it might be scary, to get up, to go out of those doors, and to be Christ in the world. To be authentically Christian. I love from the letter of James when he writes, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Interesting that they use, he used widows and orphans, who of course during that time period were the most um, outcast groups in society. But I say with a little bit of pride and joy in us that at our mission center, we're helping babies and, and, and toddlers and their mothers, many of whom have been orphaned in their own lives in various ways. And it's exciting that we're going in partnership with Catholic Charities to house a senior center. Because most of the seniors who come, the vast majority, are women who are widowed. And if you think about it, these women who are widowed who are left alone often go hungry because they can't necessarily make it out to shop and there's nobody to shop for them. They really are orphans sometimes because either they A, have no family or the family is just too busy to deal with mom? <coughs> or B, they don't have any close friends or a faith community. So when we care for the widows, we're actually living <coughs> Matthew 25 when Jesus said to feed the hungry clothe the naked, visit the prisoners. And yes, widows are often prisoners in their own homes. But when we, when we intentionally go out and use the God-given gifts that the Holy Spirit has given each and every one of you in your baptism, we can and will change the world. But we always must be, keep coming back to the church to feed on Christ, to be nourished by the word, to be in fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters, and to, as Moses instructed 
the people of Israel to teach our children and then their children and then their children for generations to come. Friends, we all know what prevents us from doing this sometimes. There was a big list in the Gospel of Mark that you look at that list and there's something on that list for every one of us, folks. Because, see, God knew, as James wrote down, as, as Jesus knew by living among us, that us human beings, we're not perfect. I heard that with so many people with Senator McCain's funeral, but he wasn't perfect, he was no saint, but he tried. And that's what Jesus asks of us to do. To try. So on this Sunday, after being fed by word and sacrament and fellowship, go out into the world to be the church and then come back again and be fed. That's body.